Why is it so important? It's because uh, there's a lot of research that looks into email versus social media, and uh, I have a bunch of references which I can point you towards if you're interested. I'm not going to go into those now, just taking some of the key points. Um, I think one of, the, one of the main points to bear in mind when we look at social media versus email is that social media moves fast. There's a hell of a lot of messages being pumped into the news feed on Facebook and, and Twitter, you've got your stream, it's, you know, depending on how many people you follow, there's tweets popping up every 10 seconds, this is three or four a minute. There's a hell of a lot of noise. And as an artist with a message that you're hoping to get to your fans, and as a fan that wants to receive the message, it can be really hard to find the signal in amongst all the noise. In favour of email, 94% of internet users uh, say that sending and reading email is their number one online activity. 75% of emails allegedly prefer to receive their marketing messages by email. And this is not even to get into the insights that you can get from email performance analytics, so things like open rates, click-through rates, which links were the most popular, uh, unsubscribe rates, unfortunately, can be also very telling. Uh, and you've got the opportunity for things like A-B testing. Is there anyone who would like me to explain A-B testing? I should slide one. Okay, cool. Okay, A-B testing is brilliant for um, email lists. Uh, it's used in quite a lot of online spheres and probably things that aren't online, but as far as I know, uh, it's used like this. You have a list, say you have a list of 10,000 names. If you do, that's great. Well done. <laughs> Um, with A-B testing, what you can do is you can split your list in, into segments, maybe two segments. So you have your A list and you've got your B list. And the way you will experiment from, from this is you send a slightly different version or an entirely different message out to... Um, usually you take a message and present it in, in different ways, markedly different ways, and you send both of those versions out, you know, one to the A list, one to the B list, and then you can measure how the performance is against each other. So if the A list you know, had a 38% open rate, uh, but the B-list had a 22% open rate, then, you know, the, the deduction would be that the list, uh, that mail you sent to that A-list performed better, so when you do future emails, you'll emulate that A-list. Kind of a long winded explanation. Does that make sense? Cool. Excellent. All right, second part we're going to look at for the timeline is the market pre-sale. Now, why have a pre-sale? This is probably a question you guys may be thinking right now. Uh, the reason we encourage a pre-sale is that it enables fans to buy from you um, as soon as you announce the album. Usually you're going to announce the album a couple of weeks, a couple of months before it comes out, depending on the level of artist that you are. Um, and if you have a pre-sale set up from the go, from the moment that you launch or announce, your, um, announce the launch, then you remove any disconnect. You really allow your fans to uh, capitalize, you're capitalizing on that initial excitement and buzz that your fans have from hearing there's a new album coming, they hear there's an album, they're waving their money around, and they can go straight to you and put it in a free order. So that's a brilliant one. Um, it also allows you to draw out your marketing window so you can really maximize your opportunities to market. Um, every time you have an announcement that's anything to do with your album or, or a tour or anything like that, you can always have it linking back to your pre-sale. So you're really maximizing the opportunities there. And if you happen to be concerned with um, chart numbers, then you can consolidate your first week sales to really ensure you get the biggest kick in that first week. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how you might plan your lead time. All right, so we have a, an empty roadmap here. We start with the date caption. You want that to run for a minimum of two weeks. Two weeks is pretty short. I would say two months. In fact, I would say tonight, go home and set up a data capture if you don't already have it. There's, there's no time like the present to be collecting fans, giving fans the opportunity to ask you to, to market to them. The pre sale this can run for four to six weeks. There's no hard and fast rule though. It could be longer, it could be shorter. Not too much shorter though, because you want to maximize those opportunities to market and push traffic towards your pre-sale. Following this, we have the release date. 
and post-sale, there are uh, further opportunities to market. So you've got uh, the opportunity to release extra content. Uh, you can release the, the stems of the tracks for remixes. You're going to put out videos. You're going to have a tour to, to announce. So it goes on. And that's your own launch timeline. We're going to move up. Questions. Does anyone want to ask any questions about that top timeline overview? Straightforward. Okay. Right. So, best practice data capture process. Now, what is the best way to get an email address is the natural question that we've arrived at. Um, there's a lot of options for uh, email sign-up widgets. There's a lot of different software platforms out there. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Uh, there's a lot of ways, basically, that you can set up a uh, set up a an opportunity, a, a data capture input field on your website. Um, there's four key points that I would suggest that you keep in mind when considering which sign-up widget to use. The double opt-in. Now, this is the basic premise of permission marketing. And what this means is that you are ensured that a list that's highly engaged and actually wants to be on your list has said not once but twice that yes, they would like to receive marketing from you. So the way this works is you have the initial input field, whether it's on Facebook or uh, whether it's on uh, a website, you enter your email address, you hit submit, and you're prompted to check your inbox. So you go to your inbox, lo and behold, there is a confirmation email, you've got to click confirm, and that's the double opt-in. Okay, so this is going to be the first serious step in creating this uh, spam relationship. So it's really important that you ensure that it's on brand, customized to your brand every step of the way. Third point is um, ideally in order to incentivize people to sign up for your list, you'll offer them something in exchange of value. So usually that's going to be uh, a track, an MP3, could be other, other kind of digital content. And finally, you want to make it easy for your fans to share. Hopefully they're uh, pretty keyed up about getting onto your list or whatever the track is that you're offering as an incentive. So make it easy for them to slap it onto their Facebook, tweet about it, use it as a little badge. Top card. Right, so I use Topspin, which some of you may have heard of, uh, as the platform of choice for data capture. I use Topspin's email for media widget and I extend it with some lab features called Bleach or Runable Download Anywhere. These are definitely most likely going to be jargon terms. I'm not going to go into them right now, but if you want to talk about this more, let's talk later. All right, but what I am going to do now is run through exactly how this data capture process works. So, here's the homepage for a band called The Veils. Uh, you can see there on the left, they use a modular bleach data capture widget. And bleach is just the, the top spin name for it, so it doesn't need to be too funny. Now, there's a clear call to action there on the widget, there on the circle. When you click on that image, it rolls aside and it reveals a data input field. So your fan enters their email address in here, and they are prompted to go to their inbox. It says thanks to your inbox in case it's too pale to be seen on them. Um, they've also got some options to share the action on their social networks. So, jumping to the inbox, we have the confirmation email. This is what it looks like. Uh, and this is the double opt-in that I spoke of just a little earlier to ensure that your list really wants to be there. Um, an additional feature of the Topspin data signer is that it sends a pixel back to the um, software, back to the software platform, so that you, the artist, are actually given information about where in the world your fan is, which is extremely valuable for marketing. Whether your fan's in Japan, whether they're in the UK, whether they're in France, we get that information. 